Hi, my name is Daniel. Welcome to my channel, Daniel's Bibliophagy. Uh, today I just have a quick question for everyone, um, something I'm just sort of curious about. Uh, it's been on my mind lately, and that is uh, particularly for parents, but this can extend to anyone who's an aunt, uncle, or just has young friends of a generation or two below you. Um, how important is it that your hobby, and in this case, I'm really referring to reading, but it could be anything. How important is it to you that that gets passed down to another generation? Like, for, honestly, like, I know we all know the answer is, well, we just, would, like, you know, introduce them to it, and, and then if they love it, they love it. If they don't, well, they'll be their own person. But truthfully, how important is it to you? And I, I don't even know the answer for myself, so I'm just trying to think this through out loud. Um, this sort of was sparked by uh, recent conversations I've been seeing on BookTube um, by Ali at Criminali and others um, about the hierarchy of, of media and how some things are considered low and base and crass and, and other forms of media who, that have been around longer, like epic poetry, like plays, the novel, all the way down to do 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 comic books, and then at the basis level you have like what you know, YouTube or or um, uh, you know hentai. I don't know, but uh, so I am. I was a theater major in college, and. I've spent a lot of time with drama, and which is usually considered on the higher end. I think mainly because Shakespeare, if it weren't for Shakespeare, I'm not sure that would be so high because in its time, theater was considered very lowbrow and classless. Um, in modern society, that has gone to a much higher echelon. So, um, They've gone beyond the age of where, like, everyone in theater is a prostitute, which is, which is nice, but, um, yeah, I, so I, I, I'm, I've always really enjoyed theater, um, but for me, like, I don't really care if, if my son ends up enjoying it as much as I do. I, for some reason, that's not as personal to me as, like, him really being into into reading and I don't know why that is other than I'm much more active now in like the reading sphere of things I don't do I don't do drama much anymore these days um that that's sort of behind me as like someone who per actively participated in theater um I don't really miss it all that much uh, there's some aspects that are really nice but like I don't miss it at all I'm not really a performer. I was more backstage and stuff, which might have something to do with it. But, um, and I, I, yeah, so it was always more important to me that my son likes to read. And he doesn't at all. Uh, he's very young. So, I mean, there's time for that to change. Though, I feel like I should be more accepting if that never happens. Um, He's certainly into other things I'm into. Um, one thing in particular is Star Trek. He loves Star Trek, but, you know, just to disappoint his old man. He, he has always been more into the original series stuff. Um, this is Pike on the cover. This is Star Trek Omnibus Volume 2, which is, I believe, all, nothing but stories about Pike's crew, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, they should make a show about it. But anyway, like, he's into Star Trek... Mainly only if it has Spock in it. For some reason, he likes Spock. And not not red Spock. Not, not the movie Spocks. He wants the blue Spocks, specifically. So, like, we can bond over stuff like this. He's really into video games. I, I, I mean, it's hard not to be at his age. Uh, so that's another thing we, we can share and, and stuff. But he hates reading. He always has. Um, he... he, he when he was in kindergarten, he would just stare down the word at the words and, and cry, and just like, cause like it, it was hard. I mean, obviously it takes work. Uh, 
So, excuse me, I am getting dry. So, I was always nervous because it, it's really hard to get by in life if you don't learn how to read. And, like, he was hitting this this impact point where he just couldn't, like, he, it, it was like um, he would almost have anxiety attacks over it. Uh, so that has developed out. He is actually pretty good at reading now. Um, just a year later. Uh, but still, it's not something he takes joy in. He really enjoys being read to, which is great. Um, and that's a way in to, to getting, like, stories into him. But, like, as a child, like, I did not need convincing. Um, I would just go to our closet that had bookshelves in it, go in there, and just come out with a bunch of stuff. Read. I mean, obviously, I enjoyed pictures, too, so I'd look at the pictures. But I, I don't even remember a time where I didn't know how to read. So, um, he's still into, like, you know, things I'm into. He is most definitely my child. Uh, but, yeah, I, it always bugged me a little bit. And I'm just being completely honest that he just doesn't like to read. So I'm learning to, you know, accept him for who he is. But, um, and I, as I, I think I mentioned before, like, I, I know that all I need to do is expose him to things and then he can develop into his own person. But like, if we're being honest, like, how much does it really bother us? Um, I'm curious about what you would think. Um, do you have something similar? with your family members or, or godchildren or, or, or nieces, nephews, just kids you know. Because um, I feel like we, to some degree, we all want to exert our influence over the next generation. But, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to wrap this up. I'm just, <coughs> just was wondering what your thoughts were, um, mainly. I do have something to show you, though, as a treat for making it this far. Um, these aren't mine, these are my sister's, but I thought they were pretty neat because these are a bunch of books from Beatrix Potter. These are the uh, UK editions, which for most of you probably won't meet a whole lot, but like these are not the ones that we had. Um, at least I know my grandmother had a few of these like Peter Rabbit books, but these are much prettier, prettier editions, I think. Um, so we have the Tale of Peter Rabbit, the Tailor of Gloucester, and these all cost uh, 35p at the time. The Tale of Two Bad Mice. There's something about the illustrations of this era that just can't be beat. They're just... I... It probably just is some chemical imprint on my brain from when I saw these images the first time. Your first whatever is somehow more meaningful because it was yours. So there's the tale of Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Big fan of frogs. So the illustrations are awesome. The tale of Tom Kitten. The Tale of Jemima Puddle Duck. My wife will not let me get a goose to put on my porch to dress up for the different seasons, and I'm very sad about that. But, you know, one battle at a time. The Tale of the Flopsy Bunnies. The Tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse. The Tale of Timmy Tiptoes. These are my enemies in real life. They uh, are all over my porch and they will not let us grow anything. My son got a sunflower last, last year because he was obsessed with them and they just ate it down to the nub. No matter what we do, they're just eating every decorative plant that we, we buy. The Tale of Johnny Town Mouse. And finally, the tale of Samu Samuel Whiskers. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm just curious of what your thoughts are on the whole matter. Um, I'm just trying to be honest. I, I know I shouldn't exert my influence unduly. 
on, on the next generation, but if it's important to you, it's really hard not to. So how do you deal with it? What are your thoughts? Am I uh, a bad man <laughs> for doing so? Thank you.